Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at PISA in Python. So first of all you're probably wondering what PISA is. Well it's <laughs> symbolic regression that's built on Julia but you use it in Python and this is a quick description explaining kind of roughly what's going on. But uh, if we want to use symbolic regression we kind of need to understand what that is as well. So first if we look at regression you basically have this line of set points and you're trying to find a line that goes through these points and minimizes the squared error. And you have two parameters, you have this gradient and you also have I guess the y-intercept and you have to find the best two parameters. Symbolic regression is about rather than trying to find the parameters that fit best, you try and find the symbols that work best to give you your outcome. So uh, here this is a symbolic regression tree and you can see that this equation is represented here and if we're editing we might take this uh, x squared and change it to an x cubed or we might take this uh, plus and change it to a multiplication or we might take this 2.5 and make it a 3 and so on and this is how PISA kind of an overview uses symbolic regression to find the best equation for the algorithm. So you see the first thing is pip install PISA and you can see it's installed with these libraries. You also need to install Julia to use PISA because it uses that back end and we'll have a look, little bit more at that later. You can also see I've installed matplotlib and seaborn so that I can do some graph plotting and then pandas and numpy. So uh, from PISA we've imported PISA which is the, the main module best and best coolable and you'll see what they do as we go down. So first we've generated 100 random values between minus pi and pi and we've done that the same with x1 and we've said that y is sine of x0 and we've kind of just put this x1 in there as a dummy variable to show that it's working and you can see we've plotted here x0 and x1 um, and it's not that important which is which, but you can see that they're different. We've also done the, this plot of x0 and y, and you can see that there's uh, the sign shape that we put in from earlier. The next thing we actually do is we add some noise to y, so it's no longer this perfect sine curve, because obviously that would be too easy. We've just uh, put a bit of noise on it. Then we've made x our data frame, but we've taken out y, and so we've got x, which is x0 and x1, and y, which is just y. And then we've run it the first time, and we've set our equations at x, y, run it for two iterations, and the functions you can use are plus, times, cos, exp, so e to the something, sine, and inverse, and inverse is 1 over x. And you can see we uh, start it, it's running on Julia, in this uh, local Julia file, uh, and it copies everything over and that works and then it does all of these cycles, it does 40 in total and we end up with the best equation to be sine x and uh, if we actually have a look at the raw output and go right to the bottom you can see it thought some of the equations that worked that were reasonable were x is this very small value sine x and sine x plus this other small value and you can see, you know, they're not that different. The idea is that sine x is slightly more complex than this constant. And this one, we've just added on a little bit to try and reduce the loss. And you can see the loss is therefore slightly lower. But it thinks the best equation is sine x. So we set r to the best callable, which is a function that we then call with x. And we plot it. And you can see this is r, so the perfect sine x. And then y is the sine x we had initially, but we've put noise on top. And you can kind of see why I wanted to shift everything up a bit. And actually, if we go back to uh, where we added this noise, the noise we've added is between 0 and 1. So it's roughly 0 0.05. And so it's not that surprising that it wants to add stuff on. But now we try again, and we give it five iterations. But this time we do it with plus times and we're also using square and cube 
So it can't actually use the sign function anymore. And you can see it copies everything across and it runs for 100 iterations. And you can see at the bottom, the equations it's, it's liking are 0, a third x, a small value plus a third x, x plus this cubic, and you can see it gets more and more complicated. And actually it ends up thinking the best equation is minus 0.1x cubed plus x. And so we set this value t in our data frame to be that. And you can see t is this roughly x minus a tenth x cubed. And I think this is nice because if we take the Taylor series for sine x, if you've got x minus a 6x cube and 0.12 is quite close to a sixth. And you can see that you know it's slightly underestimated here and slightly overestimated here. And maybe if we just had the initial sign function, it would be better. But you can see we've been able to use PISA to kind of discover part of the Taylor series of sine x, which is very cool. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. You've got some idea of how to use PISA. Um, you're aware that it's not as quick as previous modules that we've looked at, but it is a powerful tool. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, seen something cool, and I'll see you again same time next week. Till then.